and welcome. It is I, Big Ben, with Tales from the Periphery of Show Business here in Hong Kong. Now, I, you know, I love, um, I love making this podcast because every time I talk to somebody, I get, I get more ideas, and I've noticed that quite a few birthday party entertainers um, will wait outside the party room, and it's until it's time for their show, and then they will burst in and start their show. And I can certainly see the advantages in this because I, on the other hand, go into the party room um, and start setting everything up. I have quite a few things to set up, to be fair. Music system, plug in the giant balloon pump, etc. Sometimes even set up uh, a bubble um, act, uh, which involves pouring bubble juice into bottles and things. So yeah, I have some set up time. Um, but the disadvantage is, you know, you're going to get kids all over you, um, and you might you might end up having to sort of fend the kids off, <coughs> trying to uh, whilst you're trying to set up your show. So that could be you know, that's an extra, could be an extra 15, 20 minutes of um, of of work. <laughs> so if you're outside the room and you just burst in, yeah, sounds pretty good, huh? Uh, on the other hand, if you are inside the room, what I found is. You don't really need to warm up the audience because you've been there for 15-20 minutes chatting away and interacting a bit and having a bit of fun and talking to the kids. So by the time you say gather around for the show and switch your music on, uh, well I do my show starting with music so that also is, is a great way to still instantly create an atmosphere. The room doesn't feel dead and quiet even if the audience is still dead and quiet and unwarmed up because I've got bang music playing straight away. But I've been talking to a few people and I thought, oh, why don't I you know, give it a go of um, waiting outside the room until it's time to go in. I, I thought I'll take my speaker with me outside the room. It's a handheld speaker that can play music on my iPod. And I'll go in and with the music playing, say hello and hey, cover around, warm up the crowd, hey, is it Easter? No, it's a birthday, is it Christmas? No, it's a birthday, okay, it's a birthday, let's sing the birthday song, and on my iPod I can click to the next track, I've repaired it, and it's the birthday song, and while the kids are all singing the birthday song, I can then go outside and bring in my suitcase and set things up, and my unicycle, so by the time the birthday song's ended, it'll go on to the next track which is the start of my regular birthday show. So I thought I'll give this a try. I'm pretty excited and I'm waiting outside uh, the party room and then I, and then I, then I realised, hang on, I hadn't, not I hadn't noticed but until that point but the kids were all like two or three years old so ideally I should be using my playlist for young kids, it's a playlist which has nursery rhyme games in there, which is something that the young kids in particular will like. But my, I had, a, I had prepared the regular playlist for my five-year-old or six-year-old or seven-year-old parties, for six-year-olds or seven-year-olds. So, uh, well, I had to uh, rethink, and I'll try again next week. Now, today it's the second part of Matt Coombs' interview, and uh, wow, we cover a load of stuff in about 30 minutes. There's lots of observations about um, doing uh, birthday parties and there's also a bit about um, doing uh, shows for, for adults and again I think the theme for Matt Coombs is, uh, is he's always part of a team, he's part of a community of performers and this has all kinds of advantages and effects. So have a listen, I think you'll find it very interesting if you want to check out Matt Coombs, it's um, www.rumpleandfriends.com And if you want to check out me, it is www.thebigbenshow.com And that's where you can also find lots and lots of old podcasts from this uh, podcast series. And if you are interested in being interviewed by me, yeah, woo! Or if you're not interested, still call me. Um, give me an email, ben at thebigbenshow.com. Alrighty? Okay, let's, uh, enough of me. Let's go and talk to Matt Coombs, birthday parties and also doing shows for adults. Uh, yeah. We're back with 
just you never know. There might be there might be an appendix. Um, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go just as quickly, it might be an appendix. I don't know. Um, how how do you re- you may, these aren't prepared for you, so you might not have any ideas. How do you rehearse or practice? We um, meet up here in the room that you're in, and we'll. Uh, what? This in- is Hong Kong. The rooms are not big. No, we we get six or seven of us here. We all sit around. <laughs> And we'll stand up and we'll um, we go through the act. So um, so like the magic stuff, sort of as is, is fine. But um, so Scott will do his act, yes. And I'll sit and watch it and go, oh, I like that bit. So oh, I just steal stuff. Brilliant. Yeah. So we'll have because oh, this is awesome. So then Amy does hers and she steals bits from other things. Oh, wow. I do stuff, and there there are bits that I do that no one else does and there are bits that Scott does that no one else does but there are bits that I've stolen so I think Amy stole right. bits from Scott and me yeah. I stole stuff from Amy um, that's one of the good things about our, our, yeah. our career is we're not like stand-up comedians where you're not allowed to steal someone else's bit there's we're, not you can't ever say you're the oh, you're not the only person in the world who's that, ever gone hello everybody yes. and they say hello and you go I can't hear you yeah, that you, exactly. you didn't invent doing that yeah. like um, <laughs> yeah like it's all it's all silly. I mean, we have a certain style across the board. But yeah, that's how we practice. We just do it to each other. I mean, what we actually do, um, so what we'll be doing this year is upgrading, upgrading or we creating a second show yes. that is different yes. so that people can rehire us. Because aside from the six or seven different entertainers, I then want to be able to... Come back next year. Because people want show. me a lot. Because yeah. being the face of the company, yeah. you know, obviously people are like, can I have Matt? And you're like... Yeah, but you've had me like three years in a row. So yeah. now I, I need to create yep. a new... I have alternative new... shows, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cool. Because I know some people that don't. Yeah. I know some people that have done the same show well, for again, again, But then it still again, works. Again, it's, it's one of those things you, we can talk about in our industry. Yeah. Because um, some people can do the same show year after year after year. And after three or four years, there's a whole new set there's of whole, kids yeah, being born. Of course it is, so, yeah. yeah. in a way you... I think it's more fun for us, basically. Not for I, the same yeah, thing you no, that's complete. That's why I do it. It's yeah. not necessarily for the punters who, yeah. who if they've never seen it, it's just as brilliant. Mm. But um, so it's, it's more for the punters who are like, hi Matt, because I have clients now. Thank goodness that I've done. I'm doing their fourth, fifth party because yeah. they've got more than one kid. Yeah. They get me in for everything, so I make sure I give them extra touches, or I'll pack yeah. different magic, yeah. or I'll, I'll do. Um, we do themed parties for them where I don't do any magic and I'll just turn up and run scavenger hunts and yeah, games yeah. for the same prize, you know, yeah. all of that. Um, but yeah, that's how I rehearse. Cool. Here. Um, stage fright. Do you still get it? No. Brilliant. I, I used to get that. Not. Well, sometimes, I, do, I sometimes, sometimes get even... nervous, but it's not, it's not nervous about the show, but I think what's brilliant about what we do is that you never know what you're walking into. Yes. And sometimes you're just, you just want an easy show. Yeah. And you've talked back and forth, because you, you do your own emails and stuff, yeah. right, with the clients. Yeah. And the client's a bit... Fussy? Difficult or fussy, yes. Yeah. So you're just like, so you're going in, you're like, oh, I just want this to go well. Yeah. Or you're like, I know I've got, after this I'm done. It's your third part of the day. Yeah. Um, so I sometimes get like the butterflies of just, okay, come on. Especially if I'm there early, if it's like 10 two and you see the kids going in, you're like... Come on, let's just get on with it. Yeah. But once I'm in, never. I've never, I've never choked or just gone. Oh my god, I can't do this anymore. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, I still get nervous. I don't know why. Not generally not at birthday parties. If I get a corporate event, I used to do corporate events a lot, like three or yeah. four in one night in Singapore. Um, but now I get them like, like a couple of times a year, really, like a, a yeah. corporate dinner show. So I might get nervous for that. But even now, sometimes I'll turn up at a party just because the day. Wait, maybe I haven't done. Maybe been on holiday for two weeks. I'll turn up at a party. Yeah, the it's first party. It's the first party I've done for two and a half weeks, and I can see lots of adults expecting something great, and I can see the venue's really, really bad. Yeah, it's and a small like, venue. Oh God, how am I going to do a good show? I really want to do a good show. And I can get nervous like that. Yeah, yeah. When you yeah, when you look at the space and you're like, what the? How but here's it? my solution. Just stay in character. Make the funny venue, the difficulty of the venue, be part of the show. Yeah. Make people aware that it is a really weird... You might be in someone's... We're going to play games. You might be in someone's living room. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the living room ones are funny. When you're trying to play Duck, Duck, Goose, and you're like, okay, everyone move in. We're going to make the smallest circle yeah, we don't can. don't break the TV. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 
That's what I'm always scared of, that a kid's going to not that feel that 50 that Being in personal. someone's living room feels the furthest away from show business possible. But then again, if you do make it part of the show, then it, the fact that you're in someone's living room can be a great bonus yeah. to the yeah. whole act. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. Sometimes. Being in someone's living room. And you get to see where people live. Yes. Where people that are richer than I will ever dream There's to some be. some rich people. But it's... Some of them... And oh my god, some of the places bank. I've been in Hong Kong are just... I, places I would never get to go. Okay, I've been people, ever, people yeah. who are listening overseas, um, it, it is... I don't know how it is in America, really, uh, but in Hong Kong, sometimes it is absolutely bizarre. You'll be in the biggest ballroom in the biggest hotel for a children's party, and there'll be... There'll be some weird bubblegum machine. There'll be all the candy flavors. They spend like 20,000 US. Bouncy castles, banners, yeah, everything. An MC, yeah. there'll be... Yeah, sometimes it's amazing. Gosh. Yeah. Lucky us. Yes, we're... Oh, yeah, competing with stuff. Competing when, oh, you, there you, when go. you walk in a room and you've got a giant bouncy castle. Yes. Or you've got... I once had to follow Andy Comic. Exactly. I walked in, right... And I was like... Andy I Comic is another entertainer, very well known in Hong Kong. And, his, show. and his act is like, he does amazing, amazing juggling. Yeah. And like his skill his is... His skill's very high. Yeah, he's very high. Whereas my skill, my show skill, isn't high. It's more funny, hilarious yes, yes, magic that goes yeah. wrong. That's the style. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I walk in to this party and... Um, I'd seen Andy Comic in the in the venue. I think it was the Aberdeen Marina Club, and I walked in. There was like three bouncy castles oh and a stage, and I was like, "Oh, this is going to be well fun." There's loads of like eighty yeah. kids or whatever. Brilliant. I, mean, I wasn't scared of that. And then the mum went, "Okay, can we can we can you just wait ten minutes because Andy Comic's just finished?" And I was like, "I'm sorry, what?" <laughs> so I had to do a set, and it's really it was more. I wasn't I wasn't annoyed about following Andy Comic in terms of the. Um, because I was like, okay, my show's different enough yes. for it to be funny. But I was like, they're not going to sit down for another half hour. If because I, I, I haven't, yes. si- I've seen his show like like bits of his show, but I didn't know if his show was an hour of yeah. them sitting and watching yeah. or if he'd done any game. So I did, and it was quite difficult because the kids were like, "Why are we watching another no, show?" And I was like, "I don't know <laughs> why there's a second clown here." Uh, I, that was the only you didn't time. Say that. No, no. no. <laughs> I was just, but I could see the kids. The kids were like, "We've just seen a clown," and I was like, "I know." <laughs> Here's my phrase. This is my phrase. Sometimes you just have to be fancy wallpaper, so if people look in your direction. It looks pretty and colourful. That's yes, and I that guess. happens. That happens at one-year-old birthday parties as well. Yes. I turned up to one, and that literally, I'd done a show. I've done a couple of these at tea, and now I don't do them anymore. Yeah. I've, I've, I, I, I double check the age, <laughs> but I've turned up and done shows where the entire audience is being is sat. On the laps of their mums yes. or, or helpers, yes. and they and like some of them How are having their heads. But I'm, you're just like. Hello, everybody, and there's literally nothing. And I and I sat there, and I to make it work, I've just gone. Okay, I'm gonna need all of the alien hosts holding the children to join in. Yes. So all the parents, I'm like, you have to join in. Yeah. You, you have to. They're babies. Yes. Because and even I can I could have done the whole show as a not like how we're talking now with no energy. It would make no difference. They were yeah. one year. Like yeah. it was. But you're like, why did you hire me? Exactly. Like, what I don't know. What, what went through people's what was the minds? What thought process? Yeah, how is your kid going to be entertained? One year old. It's crazy, but people hire whether you want to hire. But now I check. Now balloons I'm like, is a good go-to. Do you do? I don't do balloons. balloons. You haven't heard you mention that. My balloon twister. I have separate face painting balloon right, twisting yeah. stuff. Because yeah, I know a lot of some of the entertainers they do balloons for like twenty minutes. I don't like I don't. doing. I don't like doing balloons. So I feel like a shop assistant, but it's always there in my bag and. If, if for some reason you can't do a show, um, then you can always get a line of kids waiting to have balloons twisted. Yeah. That's, that's always a, a good go-to. Yeah. Right, what's your favourite bit? What's my favourite bit? Have a, do you have a favourite bit? Is there something that you like doing? Is there something new that you like doing that you're looking forward to doing? For uh, me, I, like I like the introduction. I like doing the, the... I could do it if I'd had no sleep for two days. Is your introduction the bit where like, it's Easter? My introduction is, yeah, is the come and sit down and then like, okay, the first thing we got to do is make sure you're asleep, clean out my ears, why are we here? Can't, yeah. Easter, Hong Kong, how do we do? Um, I don't oh, know if I've explained from- that, but um, you'll come on and you'll say, it's Christmas! Yeah, yeah, and they're like, no! 
Right. And you're like, oh, sorry. Right. Um, oh, it's Easter. Chocolate. Bunny right. rabbits. No? Oh, goodness. <laughs> is it Tuesday? No. And then I go into things like, is it Hanukkah? Is it Eid? And they're like, oh, I'm like you don't know what that is. Um, which is funny. A part, uh, when you go to the Indian families, you're like, is it Hanukkah. Eid? And they're like, no. And then I did one. I did one pie. And I went, is it Hanukkah? And they were like, no. And one of the parents went, like literally from the back, straight voiced across the across the yeah. room, cut through everything, silenced the room. Just went, actually, we are Jewish. Yeah. And everyone just went, <laughs> yeah, and that was my reaction. I went, yeah, but that's not why we're here. I was like, I was like, and what? I was like, well done, you're Jewish. What do you want? It's still not I was like, yeah, oh no, yeah. I was like, yeah, but that's not why we're here. It's not Hanukkah. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I was like, don't worry. Have another glass of um, sparkling ginger beer. The kids mm. get it. The kids get what we're doing because the kids were all like, no. And the mum was like, we are Jewish. Yeah. Not the mum. The uh, one of the one of the parents yeah. like, we are. Jewish. I was like, I was like, back off. Like, no, have you done Have you done shows for the Jewish Community Centre on Robinson Road? I have. Yeah. It was a guy. Um, really low ceiling, huh? Very. Yeah. Big venue. Low ceiling. Where's the yeah. room? The room's Huge massive. Huge room. Yeah. No idea why the ceiling's that low. How but do you deal with low ceilings? There's a lot of low ceilings in Hong Kong. Do you have any problems? No, I ju- I don't. I won't do my juggling if there's a low right, ceiling, yeah. or if the kids are too close, I won't do my juggling because yeah. sometimes I'll drop them. <laughs> and if you do a jo- a show for a Jewish um, family. Always check whether they're whether you're allowed to give out candies or not. Because if they're if they're very very Jewish, then you have to go out kosher candy. Uh, yeah. I never give out candy because Cause Hong Kong is intensely lax in its um, <laughs> ch- in its supervision of children. Yes. In but from working in England, there's not a chance I would ever give out candy at a show because right. you're just inviting lawsuits if you give out. A candy and kid keels over and hasn't has a, yeah, has a fit. I never give out candy. Um, I never alone in a, in a room with a kid. Yes. Like you know, all of that sort of stuff. I'm yeah. very aware of because you ha- in England you have to be like CRB checked and stuff. You see, I, all the time, right? Yeah. Well, okay. oh, this is interesting. I should interview someone from England soon. Um, so what is CR? CRB is a Criminal Records Bureau. So before Check. you become a children's entertainer, you have to. It's it's just something that would look very good in England. In England, you it, yeah. most of them, I think most of them are. Yes. Um, but it probably, I don't know if it's a requirement. It'd be yeah. interesting but to ask. So people can look at your website. Yeah, and, and you say, say we're CRB, as in yeah. I haven't got any criminal convictions. Exactly. Because you know I'm coming into your house, into your venue, and working with kids. Yeah. Um, and you can get other things like you know, early le- yeah. early early learners or whatever. Yeah, I think it probably places like England and America. They will full on to that. I think places like Hong Kong and Singapore, they're not quite up there yet. But I like Hong Kong for that. I I I like it. I I, I give out candies and it's never been a problem at all. Yeah, yeah, which I think, and it shouldn't be. Yeah, but I like that. But I think you have to be careful with some. But I mean, a lot of kids these days are so on it. If you if there is candy and like I'll do the pinata sometimes if they've got it, um, yeah, and when it breaks open, full of candy, yeah. the kid will run up and go, I'm allergic to this, and I'm like, okay, don't eat that then. Yeah. I'm allergic to peanuts. Don't eat peanuts. Yeah. I'm allergic to sweets. Don't eat the sweets. Like. I like that. That's uh, yeah, because because you're a, a later generation than me, and you yeah. began in England. Um, you're aware of this. I, I'm pretty much aware yeah. of this as well. It's it's happening a bit more in Hong Kong. There are now like criminal records checks. Yeah, because I've got a criminal. Yeah, that you can get done and stuff. Ah, no, all of the uh, entertainers at Rumpel and Friends, no one has any criminal convictions, yes. just to be clear. <laughs> Apart from your entertainer called Peter File, he sounds a bit suspicious. <laughs> There's no such person. I was like, who's Peter File? That, that was my friend John's idea for a joke in, in Singapore. He thought, yeah, I'm going to be called myself Peter File. Oh, Peter F- oh, okay, right. Peter I File. didn't get that then. Yes, yeah, I've got it right. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I was slow on the uptake. Um... Do you ever have um, assistance for big shows? This isn't really. No, no, I don't. And a lot of a lot of um, parents so, ask me that. Actually, they're like, "Oh, we have forty kids. Will you be bringing an assistant?" And I'm like, yeah. "No, I can do forty kids. How, I've done a hundred kids." Do you get some one man corporate shows? Have you ever entered yeah. that market? Yeah, we do quite a lot of corporate events actually. So, now. so, um, so let's say you're on a stage in a ballroom for a corporate event. Yeah. 
And you'll still just come on with a suitcase, instant yeah. setup, no microphone. Yeah, no mic. Um, depending on how big the ballroom is, we did we did one at um at a bar in Central for a lawyer firm, and me and Scott did it. There yeah. were two of us, but we had no. Th- there's something about raw energy of someone filling a room with their voice Amazing. without a microphone Brilliant. that's really cool. Brilliant. So I'm I'm in there and I'm like. Okay, everybody to the sides, and everyone's moving back. Yeah. And there's me and Scott dressed up as clowns, yes. and we had like ringmaster tops on and okay. stuff. Um, and we got, and the adults loved it. And we did a similar show to what we do with the kids. What, was it an adult show? It was an okay. adult. It was adult oh. lawyers, and we did the breakaway wand. Oh, great! We did Dove Pan. We did. We had these um, bowls on that we tied to their heads. I've seen that on we, YouTube. You can see it. It's one of your party games, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you, you throw the ball. So we got the adults to Let's do that. Let's describe that in anyone's listening. They, so they, they, have, on, they can go on YouTube and, and look at it. This is on one of your videos. Yes, yeah, yeah. It is. There's, you can see um, they, they have bowls on their heads and basically the... The, the two the balls people. are strapped on, so they're not going to fall. It's like a, yeah. like a hat with a strap. So and you have to on head. throw the ball up, and then the other person has to catch it in the bowl. Lovely. And, and what was good at the at the event was that we were giving away um, prizes. So we they got they presents. provided prizes. Yeah. So the company Lovely. provided prizes. So whoever joined in got prizes, right? So the first time, no one was reluctant, which was great because wow. we had so much. And we were just yes. like, come on, this, this is going to be amazing. Um, every We did the same thing. Can I just interrupt slightly? Yeah, was, there, was there an MC or did you go in cold and you, you had to warm up? We went in cold. Brilliant. Yeah, we warmed up. Oh, you could do warm that. Again, yeah, I'm going to bow down. It's thank you very much. But we did, it's the same thing of like everything goes wrong. So yeah. we got everything wrong. We're like, we're like right, oh, this is amazing. We're, this is, wait, they all... They all look very strange for firemen. This is this is the first time I've ever done the fireman's gig. How can you lift me over your head? And they're like, we're not firemen. Like, oh, this isn't the firemen's gig. They're priests. Lovely. They're all in black and white. They're priests. Excellent. Hello, how are you? You know, all that. And what like, was the audience? Was it lawyers? Local? Local? It was uh, mixed, mixed, mixed. mixed. So, um, but lawyers are going to have a pretty high some, level of English. Yeah, but some of them were quite, um, some were quite local and they loved it. Brilliant. But it was really, I, I really enjoyed that gig and so we did all that and everything still went wrong. And But once we'd done the first thing and they got prizes, then suddenly, but also before that, greeting all the guests, we interacted with them. So I picked out a couple of people who I wanted because I was like, you got I me. picked out this large... Heavy yes, set yes, yes. white guy who was an absolute hoot who had the same top as me on. Yeah. He had a ringmaster top. It was wow. like a Halloween dress up event. And we had the funniest time. When I got him up on stage, he was slightly drunk and he was just like, I was just like, we have the same coat. He was like, you are my brother. Like, Aww. he was this amazing guy. That's, so that's it, a good tip. Yeah, yeah. Pick, at an adult event, they may be, at a kid's event, you can almost guarantee they're going to be, yeah, me, 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 you pick mm-hmm. me. At an adult event, if you can get there a bit early and uh, interact a bit and find out who might be the best volunteer. And I, to- I told him, I was like, I'm bringing you up. I was like, don't worry, you yeah. win a prize. And yes. he was like, he was so on it. And right. he made the show so funny. Right. So I got him and then I got the smallest little Indian woman that I could find. What so actually did you do with them? What, that was, the, they, they had the balls on their heads oh. and we got them to step apart and they got to, they had to throw the balls. <laughs> we made it stupidly difficult. We made, we, we put, um, juggling clubs between their knees that they had to hold we blindfolded them then they had to throw the balls backwards and try and land it in the thing and we caught them and just put the balls in in the end because oh, it yeah. wasn't about getting them to do anything impressive it was just having fun yes. and we had 10 minutes yeah. and me and Scott have been working together for so long that you we had 10 minutes for 10 minutes to do the whole thing oh it was only 10 minutes it was like 10 I think it was 10 15 minutes to oh. get on do this thing and then go. Oh, you weren't, it wasn't like half an hour. Or no, no, we've done it. We've done a couple of those, but yeah, mm. me and Scott have been working together for so many years that we we have a rapport that I've not seen in many other acts. Yes. like it's kind of we we don't have to talk about and like we know what we're doing. We have our yeah. place in the act. He's a slightly he's slightly more of the straight man. Yeah, and I'm slightly more mental. But we have um, these physical routines that we do. Yeah. So at the end of it, we were like, "Oh, that was amazing! Well done!" And we shake hands. And when we shake, when we try and pull away, we get stuck. Yeah. And we have this whole routine where one of us then falls over. Okay. And then as I try and pull him up, he pulls me down, and I put my hands on his knees, and I go upside down in this 
impressive oh. looking acrobatics yes. thing. So we do that and I'm like, help! Why am I upside down? My legs are going so I'm oh, in like a lovely. handstand on him. Oh, this is amazing. Yeah, so we have things like that that we've been doing for years and peop- and that for adults is very impressive. Yeah. Um, so we then, we get in all that and we have our back and forth and, and it, it looks that? like it's falling apart in front of their eyes but we know exactly oh, what's yeah. happening which I, I think is quite I big. had that rapport with John Heron, the guy I worked with in, um, in Singapore, mm-hmm. we had a two-man show. I know what you're talking about. Mm. When you get it going, it's great and it's... Well, I'm not going to go into it now, but, but, no, but, but yeah. it's... Um, when you meet a perform... When you have a, I'm, and me and Amy have been working together now you for just, like You just a year. spark off yeah. each other. You make, yeah. you, sometimes you're trying to make the other guy crack up and laugh. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes. And I mean, oh, it's great when it works. Amy mm-hmm. does... Um, so I'm still... When me and Amy do it... I'm still mental, but she's really stupid. Like, her, not as a person, her character. So, so I'm, I have this, like, crazy energy, and Scott's kind of a straight man, so yeah. he's like, we have to do this. And I'm like, right, we're going to get 17 elephants. And he's like, no, focus. I'm like, okay, four blocks of cheese, three... No, focus. <laughs> Whereas with Amy, I'm like, right, we need 17 elephants, and Amy will then look yeah, for the elephants. Like the and, then I'm, and then I'm like, I'm still mental. I'm, I'm like, but then I have to bring her down. It's like, so me and Amy have a very different energy to me and Scott, but it's still... We're getting to the point now because we've only working together God, for like I miss that. Yeah, a year. I should, I should get a two man act with somebody. It's good. It's it's quite yeah, funny. It's we did it. We did a two man show at the ladies' recreation yeah, club a couple yeah. of weeks ago, and it was and just. And also, if you're funny. one person in the spotlight, um, it's, it's more tiring, literally. Yeah. Oh, I. This is why I'm not fat. Is because mm. I do these shows. Three shows a day. It's just insane, and you can't eat in between because you spend your time going show to show. Yes. Well, I take a packed lunch. Oh, oh do you? Always, I've been taking pet lunches for 20 years now. No, I've not, I'm not that <laughs> clever. I just don't eat. I get home and I'm like, I'm so hungry. Or I eat some cake or most parents are like, have some pizza. Yeah. Uh, okay, this is another one that's going to be tricky off top of my head. I don't know, you should have prepared, I should have asked you to prepare for this. What are your greatest strengths and weaknesses? My greatest strength is my team. Yeah, really? No. That sounds <laughs> no, it is. It is generally my um my my quote when I, for for Rumble and Friends when we pitch people is uh, it's not what we bring to the table, it's who. Yeah. So you know, a lot of people in Hong Kong can can provide magic shows and stuff, but I think what I have at Rumble and Friends is um just the people I've got are amazing. Yeah. They're we're all roughly the same age. We all have we're all sort of teachers yeah. taught drama so we have a sort of a similar outlook and we're all friends actually like we all hang out all the time you said we're all french I was like, no, not no. french we're all french not french none of us we're are french. All french i need a french guy maybe because there's a large french well there's more french yeah, people in hong french kong now than there are english is but. there um, is there anything you'd like to improve upon yes um i think what we need to do and it's hard to do because we're so busy we spend all our time doing parties rather than um, now me, me and Amy now get a bit of time in the office this month, but we're um, we're building on on the the new characters that we have coming out. There so we're building on having not just the clowns and other people's char- like you know other themes, but we're going to have our own princess. We're going to have our own. Yes. We're going to have Princess Pandora. We're going to have Melody the Mermaid. We're going to have Astronaut Brilliant. T the Astronaut. Brilliant. We're going to have Ranger Runaway, yeah. who's like jungle parties. Um, so we're going to just do it to our own themed parties yeah. that people can hire. Yeah. So that's what yeah. I... Um, I, don't, I don't know about weaknesses. I think sometimes it's just difficult to do all the parties that I get emails for. Yeah. But I, I think what's actually... What's nice is that, um, like, Kieran um, has been, like, my big brother here since I met. Oh. So if I can't do a party, I always send them to no-name yeah. events yeah. to him. And now, Ben, I will start pushing, you know, if I can't do it. I just think, you know, I, and I've had a couple from people who go, oh, I was in touch with so-and-so, he recommended you because yeah. he couldn't do it. And I think that's, it shows a certain professional maturity that you can, it, it's not the end of the world. If you can't do a party, yeah. you like, because you're too busy, give it to, you know, we all know who yeah. each other is. Yeah. Just pass it on yeah. like it's. And then, and just, and what I say is, pass it on and let them know that I've put you in touch. 
because yeah. then it's so, it's nice for other people to know that we're all looking out for yes. each other. Because yes, we are all in competition, but like I've you know, plenty of work. Yeah, there's so, far so good. There's never there's never enough. Yeah. You can do five hundred parties. A year. We could all do five hundred parties a year, yeah. and you're still not gonna yeah. get anywhere close to the other thousands of people that didn't have parties or yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know. Do you have any particular favourite gigs that you remember? Any turning points in your career that was something that was a really big um, event. The I, I, I always bring up I, I've twice been flown to Brunei to do a show for the Sultan of Brunei but That's it's so awesome it, it sounds so awesome it was such a small non-event basically yeah. you, you're flying over on a plane you don't really meet the Sultan you're in you're in some one of his backstage palace area and you go out you do a show and then you go back to the backstage area and then you're flown back to yeah. to wherever, whatever country you came from it's not a big thing. No, that's cool though. Uh, um, um, for me, like a best show ever. Um, I think some of my corporate shows are really good fun. In, in, in yeah. Singapore. Or I yeah. That's... You're going to Vietnam. You're being flown to Vietnam. That's oh yeah, next weekend I'm being flown to Vietnam. Really? There to, you to, go. To MC a private event. It's like a. Uh, it's called. It's a monkey club. It's attached yeah. to the Intercontinental. It's going to be amazing. MC it's, for a kids event? Or no, no, it's an adult event. Ah. So that's more of like a, just a random one-off. I, it's going to be amazing. So I get to dress up and I'm like the an impresario, yeah. you know, MC for the night. So it's going to be insane. I think we've done some big, some bigger corporate events for adults and stuff. They've been really cool just because they've been just different. Just thinking about it, I can't think of my best event I ever I think it's just every now and then you do it. You just do. I mean, good I parties. had one just last weekend. Like I, like when I finished the show, generally I can't remember anything. No. Um, yeah. But I do remember that it was really fun because there were just lots of spontaneous in the moment things happening. Yeah, I did a show the uh, a couple of weeks ago at Cyberport, which was kind of my ideal show in terms of. It. I had forty five kids, and they all they went absolutely mental yeah. for the whole show. Like when you just have kids that are just roaring with laughter. Yeah. Um, then your job is just a joy. But every show I do like that um, are my best things. Okay, what about what about the the, the bigger horror, events? What about the, like what about the horror stories? I quickly oh just warm you up. Um, I've fallen into a swimming pool before a show. No, I had to do my whole show in a in a wet costume, and my costume at that stage was foam. So it was really oh soaked up like a sponge. It soaked up all the water. Oh my god! Um, I've had shows where, um, like like you said, where I turned up and it's just yeah. babies and adults, and you're like, okay. Horror stories. I've had. Um, I think yeah, the baby one is just, is the only horror story I've got. I mean, nothing bad. My I had an assistant when I was beginning, and yeah. I, I worked for a company. And they, uh, I worked for a company. I was, I had a small routine as part of their big show, and the person who brought the fire clubs on, um, set fire to a hotel once, but luckily that wasn't my fault. Oh my god! <laughs> Jesus. Well, I think if you do it long enough, and I've done it for twenty plus years, yeah, anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Yeah. And normally you come up with these crazy solutions. I've had things like, um, I, I've had things like my music. You know, I music based. My music doesn't work, so just bang, just go for, yeah. just go for talking. Yeah. I've had shows where I've turned up. Hey, it's all about me, the podcast. Yeah. No, I like it. I've had shows where I've turned up, and um, and you can just tell that they're not gonna, they're not going to. There's not enough people, maybe. <laughs> or they don't speak English. Yeah, they don't speak English. They're the yeah. good ones. Hello, everybody. Yeah. yeah. So, when the, you know it's going to be a shit show, a I've, bad I've, show, I've, I've done, I've done when my... you say hello everybody and no one replies, yeah. and I, you're like... I've done, I've done, I, I'm, I did quite a lot of work as a mime artist for about three oh, yeah. years, so I can quite easily do a silent show, and often if my voice is tired, not often, um, occasionally when my voice is tired, my voice is often tired, yeah. and occasionally when, when in that situation, I've done a, a t- totally silent show. Cool. That's fun. That's yeah. a good option. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I think nightmare shows is things you're not prepared for. If it's like they're all one year olds or they're all, they have no English, and then you're just like, yeah, want to rip your eyes out. One of my things is sometimes I just sometimes I just abandon. I ha- I do have like a choreographed show of music, and sometimes I just abandon that. I open up my box and say, 
All right, let's um. Who, what's your favourite colour? Green. Okay, let's find something green in my box, and I just yeah. improvise. And that, yeah, that that's can cool. work. That can work for a nice low key show. Like you might be in someone's living room, and there's only three kids. Yeah, yeah. Well, it looks yeah. like silly if you try and do a big stage show. Yeah, yeah. There's no point in just. Yeah, you have to go with what's in front of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With small amounts of kids. Brilliant. That's fantastic, Matt. Brilliant. Brilliant, man. Pleasure, Great talking man. to you, Pleasure. buddy. Thanks so much for coming. Cheers. <laughs> Alrighty, so that's Matt Coombs. Fantastic stuff, eh? Well, I'm off this afternoon to um, do a unicycle act with two stilt walkers on stage, so uh, better put my thinking cap on. Alright, if you want to uh, contact me and uh, be interviewed, do drop me a line, ben at thebigbenshow.com. Take care. Goodbye. <laughs>